Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel at Cute Little Things with Nancy. Hope everyone is having a fantastic summer. And today we'll be working on a mat that I made for my pets for their bowls. This fabric here I bought at Walmart. It was only $2.97 per yard. That was pretty good price for it and I can make other things with the leftover yardage that I have. So I already filmed um, the sewing part last night. This is the morning so it's not a yard of fabric here. It's what I have left. The back material is kind of a fleece with soft material not too sure to call it and the front of course is more vinyl. Uh, this fabric here, I could have just cut it and put it on the floor and call it a day. But because of my little white cat Willie and likes a splash when he drinks water, it gets everywhere and it just wouldn't be easy to clean. So pretty much what I did was fold the fabric in half and see where I wanted to cut on the fabric. So before you do start cutting, you just want to make sure you fold your fabric with the pattern facing on the inside. So once you go ahead and do that, just make sure the top part is nice and even. And what I went ahead and did is I have um, the quilting clips and I went ahead and clipped that on the sides and the top and then I put two on the fold. I did not cut the fold. The bobby pins work well as well. And then I cut where the desired uh, length that I wanted. So once you're ready, um, you just want to sew from the left. Then I ended up sewing from the top. And then I started sewing down. Now remember, this is already cut. It's just an example. And I stopped right about here. And I left that gap open so I can turn the fabric inside out. Uh, and you just want to leave it where you would like. There's no wrong or right answer in regards to that. It's just whatever makes it easier for you. So right here, I am sewing with the one fourth seam allowance on the left side, and it's just a straight stitch. So once I make my turn, I continue on, and this is at the last part, which is on the top of the fabric that I showed you earlier on the video. So right about here, I stopped approximately almost nine inches um, from the bottom part to here. And I did this just because of the material that it was, so I wasn't sure if I was gonna have any trouble turning it inside out. So depending on your material, you just want to give yourself enough room. Now, if you wanted to do it another way, um, that way you don't have to struggle so much when you start um, top stitching the opening, is instead of stopping where I did, um, you could continue on from the bottom up and almost meet in the middle, but give yourself at least maybe... Um, four inches or even a little bit less again depending on your material and how um, flexible it is to turn it inside out I wasn't too sure if I was gonna struggle and it really wasn't that bad especially since I gave myself plenty of room to turn it inside out so as you're doing this you want to just make sure um, you turn those corners now, since I did a 1 4th seam allowance, it wasn't very bad when I was starting to point, um, poke, I should say, uh, those points. So you could see how nice and crisp they still look. Um, again, depending on what seam allowance you wanted to do on your project, um, if you did them bigger, you want to just clip the corner, but not where you stitch, just right above it. That way, when you start poking those corners, uh, they come out more smoothly. And more pointier rather than have a little bulk of fabric underneath it and you just want to push those seams out as well that way when you're all set it just has that cleaner look to it so 
this is what I was talking about when you start folding your fabric in to do that top stitch. So instead of having to fold that corner where I'm folding, that would have already been sewn before you turn it inside out. And all you had to do is just um, fold the middle in. And usually it is a lot easier, but I decided to do it this way. Um, and that's what worked for me, but perhaps the other method works much better for you. Um, but it's just, sometimes it's just trials and whatever is easier. So there's no right or wrong answer. It's just whatever makes you happier in your sewing process. So right now I'm going to get ready to sew a top stitch right on that very edge. So no seam allowance. I'm just going to do that. But before that, again, depending on your material, uh, this is vinyl. And when I was starting to get uh, ready to sew, it was a little puffy with air. So before anything, I just folded it and just flatten it out and let all that air out. That way, when I start doing my top stitch around my whole project, it's going to be a lot easier than having those air bubbles. You don't have to have the special foot that I have. Um, it's a so easy foot. You could just use the measurements on your sewing machine. I bought this um, just because of certain projects that I do. It makes it a lot easier for me. And I also really want to get into quilting. So I figured this is going to be a very great tool for me once I start quilting. Um, but again, it's not something you necessarily need. I did see some of these on Amazon for five dollars seven dollars uh, so that's something you can look into i know at joann's they go from 14 to 20 dollars so you don't want to start sewing right at the edge just because once you come around it's going to not meet evenly uh, unless you want to do some um kind of quilting designs on top of it that's perfectly fine so i'm using my gauge ruler uh, so I can determine where my needle should start. Now an easier way that possibly might be better for someone else not wanting to kind of go the shortcut way as I am is taking off your project and actually doing more precise measurements with the ruler and putting like a very small dot on your fabric so you know exactly which points you have to hit as you go around. I of course decided to do kind of a shortcut way in the hopes that by the time I come back around, I will be squared away. So as, as I'm hitting my first corner, um, I am gauging the distance of when I have to turn. So seeing right here, I still have a little more way to go, so I'll just keep scooting slowly by. Again, if you did it the other approach, you wouldn't have to do none of this, because uh, you are a lot better than me than doing the shortcut way. Uh, but again, it's whatever makes you happy, and 
if you have the time and patience. Um, as long as you get to the finishing point, the process doesn't always matter. Of course, depending on your project, um, if you're making like a coat, then you might definitely want to take those precise measurements. But on a mat, a little more freeway and it lets you practice as well. So here I am reaching the end point and I was getting a little nervous that I was not gonna hit straight, but as I slowly try to pivot my fabric, but not really much, I ended up right where I started. Uh, so I was very happy with that. So after this, we're all set. Um, I did film this the night before. So once this section ends, we'll head up to where we left off, where it's sunny and bright, and we can take a better look at our finishing product. And here is the finished product. I'm very happy with the way it turned out as you could see um, with the border which oh, I forgot to mention it was a one inch border all around here you can see the border all around with the top stitches on the bottom and on the top it kind of gives it that not necessarily 3d effect but that pop If you wanted to do a little extra, you can put some wording on top of the mat. Uh, I was going to put the wordings on vinyl, Bon Appetit, but I decided not to do that. Um, that is an added step that you can do. I was more than pleased with the results. It's big enough, it's going to be easy to clean both from the top and on the bottom in case there's any water leakage. Um, I had it just put it on a mat the way it was, the fleece on the bottom would have been wet and then it's just having for it to wait to dry and this way it's a lot easier for me so i really hope you enjoy this project with me i hope you have fun patterns and a great summer as well and i really hope to see you very soon on my next video have a good one bye <laughs>